Hi everyone, I'm Lorenz and in this video I'm going to talk about all Pro Evolution Soccer games for the PS2. Pro Evolution Soccer 1 was an instant success when it came on the Western market. What was so amazing about the game was its realistic approach. Before PES, games usually tried either to be arcade and fun or tried a mixed gameplay of half arcade and half simulation. But PES was the one that got the praise of being the most simulation out of them all at that time. This was the main praise, and the one that got the franchise the first boost. Reviewers of that time liked that you could tweak the trajectory of your shots, and if you score, you feel rewarded, unlike FIFA 2002 where it was easier to dribble and score big. Here having a score of 1-0 to zero was something. It felt rewarding, because you had to work a lot for it. The game even has 112 teams and each character looks distinct and has accurate stats, which is impressive. The presentation is a mixed bag, from afar the game looks good, but from up close you can see the visual flaws of the game, like the nets that don't bulge realistically to the ball, or the cardboard crowd, or the lack of big details on the players, but even so, the game is amazing. You can even customize the players you get. The series started big on the western market and it managed to remain big. And I said the Logni review that the game came to the western market. And on the screen you can also see that the game is also called winning 11-5. What's the difference? Well, Pro Evolution Soccer is actually a redesigned winning 11 game. The original Japanese version had more tougher, even more simulation-like controls, the language is obviously Japanese and has more extra stuff specifically for the Japanese market, like more teams, I mean specific Japanese teams. It's debatable whether PES and Winning Eleven are the same game, I mean their similarities sure are plenty, but you can also draw many lines on where the games differ. PES is a redesigned version of Winning Eleven for the Western market. Pro Evolution Soccer 2 looks at first impression just like the first one, but it isn't. Konami listened to what the player said and improved the gameplay. They improved key aspects like passing, tackling, dribbling, they expanded the training modes and added an overhauled Master League mode that creates an even more immersive experience. Also Konami claims to have implemented more than 10% more animations for each player, and the game shows it. Also the game has a much more complex player transferring system. Pre Evolution Soccer 3 doesn't bring new game modes, but it improves the already existing gameplay. You can see a boost in graphics, the characters look more lifelike, the physics are better in the game, and the passing and shooting feels improved. And the gameplay is more fast paced, which makes the gameplay more challenging than past iterations. But due to the better controls and engine, the difficulty isn't frustrating, it's only challenging. Also the game has more licensed teams, and Master League was split into regions. Pro Evolution Soccer 4 has again more teams. Now the game has English, French, German, Spanish, Italian and Dutch top divisions. In rest you can spot some subtle improvements too, like for example the better AI, tweaked play on advantages and better through balls, dribbling is tighter and free kicks now allow layoffs. In Pro Evolution Soccer 5 the following improvements came, they are two. One, the preset faces of the generic looking players look better, and two, you get snow for the first time in your franchise. In rest, I haven't noticed anything. I've looked it up on Wikipedia articles and didn't find anything, and I've read reviews and I didn't find anything else about the game. So the only differences from Pro Evolution 4 to 5 are this. Pre Evolution Soccer 6 brought as improvements a better AI, better physics, better collision, more moves you can perform on the field, and more teams. And all of this make the control feel tighter. And the wiki article of, for this game also says that it's the best Pre Evolution Soccer game of all time. 
But even if it had a huge impact when it was released, you will see that future iterations still made improvements and made the game even bigger and better. In Pro Evolution Soccer 2007 you can spot again similar improvements, better graphics which were still kind of poor for that year, you get more licensed teams and stadiums which are still fewer than in FIFA and the gameplay is unchanged. You don't get any new game modes or something that to really say yes, this is brand new in Pro Evolution Soccer. But even if it's not worth getting the copy of this one if you own previous titles, it's still a very solid game nonetheless and it still remains the best soccer simulation game out there. I mean it's much more of a simulation than FIFA. Pro Evolution Soccer 2008 is like a reviewer on PT Gamers said. The game feels rather like an update than a new game. The flaws from previous years are quickly becoming blatant. And still they manage to fade away after a few hours of truly satisfying play. So yeah, the game is still fun to play and solid. But you don't get anything new. It feels like they copy pasted the same game but you get a different paint job, it doesn't say 2007 on the cover, it says 2008. And the fact that you get a new menu doesn't justify as an improvement to get a new game if you already own one. Pro Evolution Soccer 2009 brings a new game mode, the Become a Legend game mode, where you create your own character and get into this behind the character camera and play as one player on the field. You become a player, you don't control all of the players, you control just yours. And the mode is awesome. And I have to praise also the character creation tool. It's amazing how many options you have there. There are 631 faces to choose from. Which is crazy. PES 2010 has a new game mode, UEFA Champions League. In rest, in gameplay, it's similar to past iterations. PES 2011 has another new game mode, the Copa Liberatores, making it an incredibly varied game in what the competitions are concerned. But in what the football itself, I mean the gameplay itself is concerned, you get again two experiences. The same solid football one and the become a legend experience. So gameplay wise, the game isn't that different, but considering that you get a new cup and considering that you get all of the previous cups, the game is pretty good. And from here on, the games are pretty much copy paste. In each year you get a different paint job. I'm not reviewing each one in particular because you don't wanna hear me repeat the same information. So just know that from this point, all of the games are pretty much copy paste. You get a different cover and different menus, but the gameplay and the game modes are the same. Some improvements would have been nice, but Konami was more focused on bringing a better gameplay experience on the PS3 and Xbox 360. They still made games for the PS2 because there was still demand for them. People in poorer countries didn't make the switch to the new generation consoles yet. They were still playing on their PS2s. And if there was demand, Konami provided copy-paste games. From the marketing perspective, it's a win. It's genius. I mean, you just copy and paste the same game, but you change the cover and the menus and tweak some stats. It's genius. But from the dedication to the fans perspective, it doesn't look that great. Though, if you think about it, people were demanding the games. So Konami provided, which means that they did care about their fans. And thinking even more about it, the series has already reached its peak on the PS2. It can't go much further, mostly because of hardware limitations. The PS2 can't pull off games like the PS3 or 360 do. Those are much more powerful consoles. So yeah, it's debatable whether it is okay or not that they just copy pasted the latter games in this series. Okay, so this was the video. 
if you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and terribly tunnels of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.